live from KSAT 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Gusty winds hail in parts of our viewing area, but not in San Antonio. Tonight we are tracking severe weather that's moving through different parts of South Texas. Yeah, maybe you have it, maybe you don't. Some of you sent us these photos and videos through KSAT Connect. You can see hail that's a little larger than a penny and some soaking rain that moved right through San Antonio. Let's get to meteorologist Mia Montgomery for the latest. She's been following these storms all day. At five o'clock, I said we're kind of in a storm sandwich. It's like yeah. we have Del Rio's getting it. Lavernia got it. Yep. We didn't. Yep, and now we have an update because this cold front that we have been tracking all day has managed to push through the majority of South Central Texas. Good news, our severe weather threat is diminishing. So Friday evening plans looking a little bit better than what they were a few hours ago. As Steve and Stephanie mentioned, we were dealing with a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings across the far western reaches of our viewing area near Del Rio, north of Brackettville, northwest of Concan over the past hour, but you can see how those storms have quickly weakened. Just a few showers to a couple of downpours left of that activity. So now our focus is going to turn to the weekend. Of course, we will continue to monitor the radar for you tonight, but it's really this weekend where you're going to want to still keep that KSAT weather authority app handy because we are expecting scattered hit or miss showers and storms pretty much each day. So we're going to Time it all out, get you a look at that latest version of your future cast coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you. Tonight, a community united in grief. People gathered to remember a 17 year old girl who was killed. The vigil for Caitlin Hernandez was held at the drainage ditch where her body was found late Tuesday night. The San Antonio police say the Roosevelt High School senior was strangled, and at last check, no arrests have been made. Garrett Berger there as people paid their final respects. This spot holds tremendous pain for Caitlin Hernandez's family. One of her aunts saying she doesn't even want to think about what her niece had to go through underneath this very bridge. But the dozens of mourners who came out today didn't come to remember that moment, but the 17 years of life that preceded it. They came with flowers and messages of love to show their support. They had balloons and many dressed in her favorite color, red. There were also a lot of tears. Tears for the loss of a 17 year old girl who loved dogs and her sisters, for the diploma she was supposed to hold in just over two months time, and the future she'll never get to grow up and see. Speaking with media beforehand, her family once again asked for help finding the person or people who did this to Caitlin. And to the person who did this to her, come forward. Don't let them come for you. They're gonna, they're gonna come get you. You turn yourself in, turn yourself in. Don't be a coward. Family members said they still can't talk about the case. Crime Stoppers has offered a reward for information leading to an arrest. We have information on how to claim it on our website. Just find the story on KSAT.com. Of the dozens of people who showed up here today, many didn't even know Caitlin, as evidenced by a show of hands during the vigil. But still, they came to offer their respects and show their support for a family going through the unimaginable. On the northeast side, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Let's hope somebody comes forward. Thank you, Garrett. Well, they were describing the torture a little girl allegedly went through when an attorney's need for medical attention brought the trial to an abrupt halt. Yeah, Ruiz is charged with injury to a child in the death of little five-year-old Mercedes Lozoya. As Erica Hernandez explains, this trial could end early next week. We have a, a little break right now. Defense attorney Teresa Conley asked the judge to pause proceedings nearly an hour into testimony this morning. EMS was soon called in as a precaution, and Conley was taken to a hospital to get checked out. This happened as chief medical examiner Dr. Kimberly Molina was on the stand. She described how the abuse and torture Mercedes Lasoya suffered contributed to her death more than two years ago. Jurors were shown images and heard testimony on the five-year-old's injuries throughout the week. Numerous injuries were identified upon the body, including contusions, which are bruises, abrasions, which are scratches, and a laceration, which is a skin tear. Specifically, the laceration was on the back of the head. The contusions and abrasions were scattered over the entirety of the body, um, most averaging around the size of an inch, but ranging up to about four inches. 
Dr. Molina described how the extensive trauma caused Mercedes's muscles to break down, resulting in kidney failure and heart failure. She also pointed out that this happens usually after prolonged trauma to the body. The defense co-counsel was able to cross-examine Dr. Molina. After that, the jury was let go for the day. The trial will resume back on Monday morning around 9 a.m. Of course, we have been live streaming and we will continue to do so. You can watch live on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, and KSAT's YouTube channel. At the Kathina Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Tonight, a 23-year-old man in custody following a possible DWI crash on the north side. That crash happened about 2.45 this morning on Highway 281 near the, the Nakoma exit. Officers say that man was driving too fast and lost control. That's what they suspect, and that's when he hit a center cement barrier and flipped his vehicle. The driver taken to the hospital for minor injuries. SAPD says he was then arrested on a DWI charge. No other injuries were reported. The U.S. Supreme Court denied a request by a Texas college student group to host a drag show on campus. Instead, it sided with administrators at West Texas A&M University in their decision to prohibit the performance. Now, Spectrum WT, which is the LGBTQ plus group on campus that uh, filed an emergency petition with the high court uh, to let the show go on. Now, their petition claims the ban violates the First Amendment. Now, going back to the Supreme Court, here's the thing. Today's order isn't going to decide this issue. However, it does mean that while the litigation continues, the group cannot host a drag show on campus. It's one of the deadliest cancers in America, but do you know the signs of colorectal cancer? March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. The American Cancer Society estimates 53,000 Americans will die from this type of cancer this year. As one doctor told our John Paul Barajas, it is a growing danger for one particular age group. Essentially, 20, 25 minute exam can be life saving. I think that that's just, I mean, you know, who can, who can argue with that? A colonoscopy may be invasive, but it's important. Colorectal cancer is the third most commonly diagnosed cancer among Americans, and the American Cancer Society says it's one of the deadliest, second only to lung cancer. But doctors say it's also one of the most preventable. We know that if they would have had the colonoscopy, there's a real, real good chance that we would have caught this when it was at the polyp stage, when it was at that growth stage. Dr. Ronaldo Sainz says screening is recommended at age 45. That used to be 50, and Dr. Sainz believes the recommended age will continue to drop. At group, the 20 to 40, uh, 49 age group, we've definitely seen significant amounts. It's essentially almost doubled uh, with regards to colon cancer and quadrupled with regards to rectal cancer. Science tells us regardless of age, anyone experiencing rectal bleeding, consistent change in bowel habits or abdominal pain should see a doctor. He also recommends being aware of colorectal cancer in immediate family members. Say dad had colon cancer at the age of 40, you, you know, all the kids should be getting sc screened at the age of, of, of 30. A doctor says a healthy lifestyle and a good diet can go a long way by getting fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. And fiber is key. He recommends about 25 to 30 grams daily for women and 30 to 35 grams for men. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. This is something I feel very strongly about. I had an uncle die from colon cancer. He did not get a colonoscopy. I was sure to get one. So just how common is colorectal cancer? Well, according to the American Cancer Society, they estimate more than 106,000 new cases of colon cancer this year. Around 54,000 of those are in men and 52,000 are in women. Now, at, as for rectal cancer, the American Cancer Society estimates that there are going to be 46,000 new cases this year, 27,000 of them in men and nearly 19,000 in women. Check out traffic on this Friday and you can see that things are moving along very smoothly. This is I-35 southbound at Maine, both the upper and lower decks. A little busy as people try to exit off I-35, but... Things moving along very smoothly, and even as this weekend could still get soggy, it's not right now. There's still a lot of events planned in the downtown area. That will mean traffic. RJ Marquez has a look at the potential trouble spots. 
Well, there's going to be a lot going on in downtown San Antonio, of course, if the weather cooperates. So let's take a look exactly at what we're going to be seeing in terms of some street issues and also some things that are going to be taking place. The biggest two things taking place this weekend, of course, are the St. Patrick's Day River celebration. That's going to be up by North Presa and La Soya right there at Mad Dogs. And you can see the river route right here kind of circling around to the St. Mary's area and also coming up on Soledad. So keep that in mind. There's going to be a lot of people there. And if you go a little bit south on South Alamo Street, there's going to be a lot of people at the Tejano Music Awards at Hemisphere. Let's show, let's show you some video exactly of the San Antonio River when it gets dyed green. Of course, this has become a pretty cool annual event across the city of San Antonio, and there are thousands of people that make it out there for all the fun and festivities out there for St. Patrick's Day. So again, a lot of people expected to be in this area. As we come back out to our maps here real quick, want to show you real quick one more time. This is the route there for the river starting there at North Presa and La Soya, but we also want to let you know about some street garages, some city street garages that are going to be available. The Houston Street Garage, that's one option. The Convention Center Garage and the Alamo Lot. Those are all city owned parking lots. Now, this is not all that's taking place there. The Majestic is also going to have an event there this weekend, as well as the Lila Cockrell Theater and the Tobin Center. So be safe and make sure to plan ahead. Well, we still want you to stick around here on the news at six. You've probably seen those beautiful blue bonnets along the highway, but you probably asked this question, is it illegal to pick them? Well, after the break, we're going to explain the laws surrounding our state flower. And taking a look outside with live cam. A lot of dark clouds out there. Rain is possible in the forecast for the weekend, and Mia Montgomery is going to break it all down in her full forecast. Coming up next. On April 8th, all eyes are going to be on the sky, on the sun, watching the total eclipse. But we're going to tell you what this telescope here at Triner University is going to be aimed at. Some colleges and universities are starting to receive their first round of data from the FAFSA application. So coming up tonight on the Night Beat, we're breaking down these updates when it comes to this application. And we're walking you through how some San Antonio schools say they've already started their process. Looking ahead to tomorrow, the San Antonio Municipal Court will be open on a Saturday to help people resolve any outstanding citations without fear of arrest. It's part of the city's warrant resolution campaign. The court will be open from 8 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon. If you can't make it in person, the court also offering virtual sessions Monday through Friday from 2 to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Details to sign up for those are on the court's website. By the way, this campaign ends March 22nd. Okay, so speaking of dates, you have about a month left to file your taxes. And here's the thing, you can still get help filing and it's free. People living in San Antonio can use the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program until April 15th to file their taxes again for free. You can get those services at 13 locations throughout San Antonio, also in Fredericksburg. Some of those locations do offer refund anticipation loans and they don't charge fees or even interest. For more information, go to VITA essay.org. Beautiful time of year to be in Texas, especially driving on some of the highways. The blue bonnets are in bloom and they're so pretty. A lot of people like to pull over, take pictures of themselves or their kids beside the blue bonnets. But first, make sure you do that safely. And there's always the question. Can you legally do it? Can you legally pick blue bonnets on public land? Well, there's actually no specific law against picking blue bonnets. However, there are laws that will keep you from it. For instance, let's break this down now. It's illegal to take any plants, animals, or artifacts from state parks or National Park Service lands. It's also illegal to trespass on private property. The Department of Public Safety is also warning that there are laws against damaging or destroying rights of way and government property. According to DPS, quote, even though picking a few flowers may be okay, individuals should not dig up clusters of flowers or drive their vehicle into a field of flowers, end quote. You could be charged with destruction of a right of way. Remember, you're driving rules and laws like failure to signal, impeding traffic, illegal parking. As soon as you're respecting other people's property and following traffic laws, you're unlikely to face any legal trouble for picking a blue bonnet or two. Yeah, maybe you just take the pictures and leave them there. Yeah, that's what I say. Definitely not something that you would have wanted to do today, maybe even not this weekend, right? Right. Hey, but at least, you know, wildflowers and the blue bonnets, they love the rain. Yeah. For a lot of folks here in San Antonio, our rain chances are coming down this evening, but we have 
pretty decent scattered rain chances in the forecast for the weekend. So there's that. I do want to talk about again one of the reasons why good news our severe weather threat is diminishing specifically here in San Antonio and pointing farther up to the north. There's been a weak cool front that's been pushing through south central Texas. The question of today was where does it stall? Does it stall right over San Antonio? That would have meant that we would have seen more severe weather. Does it stall farther out to the south? That means that we see less severe weather, and that is exactly what happened. The scenario number two, that front has moved through the majority of the area, which is one of the reasons why our severe weather threat is coming down this evening. Still do have a severe thunderstorm watch in place for our southern and western counties running through 8 p.m., so we will continue to monitor your authority radar just to be on the safe side to see if anything else does pop up against southwest of the Alamo City. Speaking of which, if you caught us during the news at five, we were monitoring a few severe thunderstorm warnings way out west, north of Brackettville, even near Del Rio. You can see those storms have pretty much fizzled out. Just a stray shower left there. Northern Kinney County, one just to the southwest of Brackettville as well, but the one that was approaching Concan in northern Uvalde County, even Lakey, for the most part, that has fizzled and dissipated. The same can be said with this little thunderstorm that passed just south of Eagle Pass over there in Maverick County, and we were also keeping tabs on a few downpours southeast of Yorktown as well as Quero. That was pushing closer to Victoria and Edna, but most of the weather now near the Houston area. So I think for most Friday evening plans, especially here in town, those are looking to sit in slightly better shape. Now we focus on the weekend because we still do have a 60% potential both Saturday and into Sunday to find some scattered showers and a couple of thunderstorms. So let's walk you through the latest version of your future cast. Notice again tonight 9 to 10 p.m. We'll still monitor our far southwestern counties where that front currently is to see if we can't still find an isolated strong storm. But after that, the severe weather threat almost goes away as we head into the overnight. Very, very low. We're going to call it a about a 40% potential for a few widely scattered showers and a couple of downpours as we sleep. As we head into your Saturday, don't pay too much close attention to the exact placement of where this particular model is putting some of those showers and a couple of thunderstorms there as well. Generally, just expect some activity on the radar to be pretty hit or miss scattered in nature. Again, that 60% potential into your Saturday, and that will carry over into Sunday as well. So here's what that looks like on your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Temperature wise, it is going to be a muggy start tomorrow. 65 degrees. I think we'll We'll get close to that 70 degree mark for any lunchtime plans, but because of the cloud cover that's expected to stick with us throughout the majority of the day, high temperatures really in the low 70s. That's about it into Sunday, right around 70 degrees. That forecast high temperature there as well for the back half of the weekend. Your St. Patrick's Day still muggy in the morning around 62. So keep the umbrella handy over the next 48 hours. Rain chances do continue in an isolated fashion into early next week, and here Here's the reason why that low pressure system that we've been talking about for the past couple of days still anchored over the desert southwest. It is going to stay there for a while. It's just sending this upper level energy still into the state of Texas. So that's why we will at least keep some isolated chances for rain in the forecast through at least the first half of next week, something that we definitely could use until then cloudy out there right now. 73 degrees. It is a little breezy winds out of north northeast at about 10 to 20 miles per hour dew points in the 60s so that mugginess is still very much with us actual temperatures though in the mid to upper 60s north of san antonio a little bit warmer the farther south that you go 80 in pleasanton 76 in uvalde again still keep the rain gear with you this weekend 60 percent potential for some scattered rain over the next couple of days then that second little push of cooler air arrives into early next week high temperatures trend down back in the 60s hey okay, thank you all right, they're playing a couple games in Austin. Their first one is tonight against the defending champ. It's going to be a tough one, but I think it's going to be a good battle between the two because both are very motivated to earn wins, but for, of course, different reasons. We'll preview the matchup. Plus, the Dallas Cowboys have cut ties with two of their top three picks from the 2018 draft. The details right after the break. We've heard 
this before. It'll be a battle between the best and worst records in the Western Conference when the San Antonio Spurs welcome the defending champion Denver Nuggets to the Moody Center confines this evening in Austin. The 14 and 52 Spurs are 11 point underdogs entering the matchup, but disparity in rank hasn't stopped the Spurs from upsetting teams in the past. San Antonio is out of the playoff picture, but you wouldn't know it by their hunger to win games and finish the season strong. Compete, execute, and go out there to, to play to win. And, um, you know, I feel like when we play great teams, we show up and, and, and perform. So I think we, uh, we're going to take a lot from these games, come playing them down the stretch, but uh, we're definitely going out there to win and get at them. If you recall, reigning finals MVP Nikola Jokic dropped a triple-double on the Spurs when the two met in late November. But right now, more than anything, the Nuggets want the top seed in the West to try and replicate what they did last year. Now, Denver had the top seed until OKC took a share of it with a win in Dallas last night. That's how tight the race is in the West. It was great to us last year, uh, and, and that allowed us to have home court advantage the entirety of the playoffs, which helped helped us win the first championship in Nuggets history. So the fact that you know uh, with 16 games to go, we currently sit at one in the West is great. But at the same time, we know we have plenty of work to do, and the margin of error in the Western Conference between us and OKC and Minnesota and the Clippers and New Orleans, who's playing lights out right now, um, you know you, you have a little bit of a dip. And, you know, you look around and next thing you know, you're not in first place. No room for error. Safe to say both organizations are highly motivated entering the matchup for very different reasons. The Spurs and Nuggets tip off at 730. We'll recap the action tonight on the night beat. Well, in the latest Cowboys free agency news, Dallas released linebacker Leighton Vandresh and receiver Michael Gallup. The move cut ties with two of the club's top three picks from the 2018 draft. Van Der Esch was released with a failed physical de designation after missing 12 games with a neck injury in 2023. The injury was the fourth since 2019 involving the 28-year-old's neck and was considered career threatening. Now the move on Gallup was a cost cutter for the Cowboys. It came just two years into the five year contract and he signed not long. At, uh, he had signed after tearing his ACL late in the 2021 season. Conference tournaments and men's basketball are heating up. The Big 12 um, have top four teams standing still as the semifinals tip off tonight. Tech advanced with the win over BYU yesterday and now they're facing the top dog Houston who was eliminated or who eliminated TCU in the quarterfinals. Houston and Texas Tech tipped off at six o'clock right now. Houston leads 17 to five over TTU. Baylor and Iowa State are set to tip off at 830 and in the SEC tournaments, Texas A&M battling Kentucky right now. The Aggies have the 15 to 10 lead over Kentucky in the first half. We'll update you on these games during the night beat. Aggies probably need to win this game to get into the tr big tournament. Yeah, so. there's a lot riding on that game. Absolutely. For them. I agree. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. And there's so many fun things happening this weekend. We're going to break them down for you right after the break. Budo picks up next. Oh, yeah, you know what that means. She's got her own theme song and everything. It's Friday, so it's time for Pearl Picks. <laughs> That's right. Once again, we have a busy and fun weekend here in San Antonio. Our good friend Stephanie Guerra is here with us now to give us the scoop. All right, so let's start with one event that's actually already happening. It, it started on Wednesday. It is the Femme Comedy Fiesta. Yes, so we're still celebrating Women's History Month, right? Go us, yeah, yeah. yeah. and your daughters, yeah. yes. and your wife. Yes. <laughs> um, so Femme Comedy Fiesta is going on right now at Upstage Comedy Lounge. They started on March 13th, and it goes all the way through Sunday. And every night there are great acts that start seven and later, so you can still catch it tonight. Um, of course, all women, powerful comedians. A lot of them right from right here in San Antonio, oh. Austin, South Texas, all over. But it's you know, a whole week of women comedians, and you don't get to see that too often. It's a great idea. Yeah. I love it. I love it, and I think we should do lots more of it. I agree. <laughs> I'm on board with that. All right. I am fascinated by lowrider and lowrider culture. So right. this next thing going on at the Freeman, yeah. 
Seems like it's right up my alley. It's one of my favorite events that comes to town, yeah. you know, every year. It is that San Antonio's Lowrider Super Show and Concert at the Freeman Expo Hall. We love Lowrider culture in San Antonio, obviously, right, Steve? You've yeah, been here absolutely. forever. Yes. We see it still on every corner, cruising in Brackenridge, all around downtown. You see the beautiful cars, music, art, you know, vendors that come with it. So you'll get to see all of it tomorrow indoors at the Freeman Expo Hall. So if you're worried about the weather, that's good. We'll let Mia and everybody tell us if we can go, but it's inside, so you don't have to worry about is, that. Is the concert, are they going to have the band that sings Low Rider there? Not I believe this the band's year. war. Yes. But I believe yeah, that, that would be year. awesome if they, they did. They do have a really awesome lineup, um, and I'll get it wrong if I just name people off the yes. top of my head. But if you go to the Low Rider Super Show website, they have San Antonio's lineup of musicians, a lot of classic, oldies, freestyle music that we grew up with cruising to you know in our cars yeah. so low yeah high, low, war's dirt. not going to be there tomorrow but it's going to be an okay. awesome lineup of music right, and yeah. the kids i believe are free so you can oh. take all the kiddos with you to see that too love it okay. <laughs> awesome now next up we have and i believe this is tomorrow it's the que sabor loteria at stable hall Yes, so I know we've mentioned Stable Hall because it's a brand new a it. brand new venue over at the Pearl. They are starting a new Saturday series called Que Sabor Loteria. So you can go play Loteria and a band will be playing at the same time. So tomorrow's band is called Sonora Hechicera. Um, also women, celebrating women this month who are in the band. And it's just going to be a fun time. The ticket price is very minimal. You can go and win prizes and you get to play Loteria in Stable Hall, right? So... I don't know if they were doing that 100 years ago when the stable was built, you Maybe. know, but, <laughs> but it's something new and fun to take the whole family to or just go with your friends tomorrow also indoors. And just get to see what Stable Hall looks like Beautiful. because they've really done a great job yes. updating it, making it a music venue. I can't wait to go to the next concert there. We saw Black Pumas there, but, you know, we're waiting for the next opportunity. We can go back. Did you like how it was? It was amazing. The sound was great. You know, it was a sold out show, packed house. We were still able to, you know, get drinks, go to the restrooms, yeah. have fun. That makes We a found difference. parking. Yes. You know, yes. it was really great. And it, it was awesome to see so many happy faces in this new venue yeah. with a beautiful mural behind it and that stage and the drapes and it's a beautiful place everyone needs to be able you're to selling see. it <laughs> no it's beautiful it's, it's, it's awesome it's, yeah. it's a brand new venue you know anytime we have a new venue we need to celebrate it and support it so we can keep them around i've yet to see a show there maybe this weekend you got to do it i'll do loteria does that count <laughs> all right so next we have you know, a lot of green beer is going to be flowing this weekend. <laughs> it's probably already flowing down it's on the river flowing. walk. Yeah. And by, by the way, I, before we talk about it, I found out that they're not only dying the river, the main part yeah. of the river that you think they're downtown, I heard they're also doing the Mission Reach oh, wow. part of it. Well, that'll be awesome because a lot of events hopefully that'll still be taking place yeah, are outside on the by, south side of the, the river. Pearl would be great too. Yes, you know, I love St. Patrick's Day. There's so many things going on around town because we have a lot of Irish culture here yes. in San Antonio. Um, two fun places that you can go celebrate are at Be Kind of Rewind, which is right downtown. They've actually had a St. Patty's Day pop-up going on all week oh. so they've transformed their bar into a saint patrick's day celebration and you can go dancing have fun and then francis bogside which year round is actually a irish bar an yes. irish pub um, in saint paul square downtown has a huge you know multi-level place that they're going to be celebrating today through sunday a lot of fun Maybe there won't be all green beers everywhere, but there's green, Sunlight. you know, uh, uh, and every every turn I, at that place in Francis. I, I like the I like the description. <laughs> Drool worthy Irish options. Yeah, I, and you know we we normally frequent there, and they have a lot of great Irish food, Irish beers, and obviously you see Jameson everywhere. So the yeah. Irish whiskeys are a big staple at Francis Bogside, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And you can enjoy both of those, also rain or shine. So it's going to be a fun weekend if this is, we can get out. Safely. Yeah. <laughs> yes, no, this is good. Okay, bef before you go, though, we want to talk yes. about an event that's happening uh, next Saturday. It's the Cesar Chavez March. Yes, I want to make sure we mention this mm -hmm. so people have time to plan, yes. right? Next Saturday is the um, annual Cesar Chavez March. So that actually starts over in the west side. Um, in front of the Guadalupe Theater on Guadalupe, and that is where Cesar Chavez himself used to march and rally in the yes. west side of San Antonio. His family continues the legacy, and we also have the local San Antonio Cesar Chavez Fund um, that is 
organizing this. And this year, the Grand Marshal of the Parade is actually the family of Willie Velasquez, mm -hmm. which is amazing. It's free. It's for all ages. You got to walk a little bit. It makes it all the way into downtown when you do the march. If you can do that, do what you can. But it's an amazing celebration of celebrating our workers. Yeah, right? it's, a, it's the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center. Yes, that's yeah. where the theater is. You will start right in front of the theater yeah. on Guadalupe and Brazo Street. You'll walk over the Guadalupe Bridge and then into downtown. And it's just amazing to be around everybody knowing we're still fighting for those things today. Yes. Yeah, and I'm glad that you, I'm glad you pointed out that this gives you a week. Yes, plan get ready, and go. more than a week. Yes. Make your plans. Make sure yes. you're wearing comfortable shoes. Comfortable shoes. Yeah. So much to celebrate in San Antonio. Yes. I love it. I don't know how you choose what you're going to do on a weekend. I never can. I know. <laughs> Maybe you do people, everything. People that message me and uh, you know try to get me out somewhere, then that's normally top of mind, and I'm like, okay, let's go there. So yeah, we'll and I haven't I haven't mentioned this in a few weeks, but if you're looking <laughs> for Stephanie's uh, social media handle. It's at Puro, <laughs> rhymes with flinche. It does rhyme with flinche. Yeah. And, and it rhymes it. with the other word that starts with a P. <laughs> <laughs> it is the you other can word. It Don't get pinched starts. this weekend, right? Yeah, there you great. go. There, there you go. go. <laughs> We're Stephanie great. Guerra, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you with us on Happy a Friday. Happy weekend. <laughs> we'll be right back. Just in time for dinner tonight, we're looking for the best black beans in a can. They're super, excited about this. Yeah. I am. They're super healthy, cheap, and they go with all kinds of things from enchiladas to salads. Also, they're delicious. 12 on your size, Marilyn Moore, shows us which popular brands got top ratings. At Sandy Luna's house, black beans are on the menu a lot. So mainly I make them guisadas or kind of like stewy. Um, where it's you eat them with rice. The other way is to make it cooked already with the rice. The way we eat them the most, and I kind of took that for granted, is in salads. Cooking dried beans is easy, but it does require a little planning because you need to soak them overnight. Canned beans are super fast, but be aware they contain more sodium than dried. Consumer Reports tested six different brands of canned black beans, and a half a cup contained up to 450 milligrams of sodium. That's about 20% of the maximum amount of sodium you should have in a day. A lot of people have high blood pressure, so rinsing your beans can help. On average, sodium levels can drop by about 40 to 50 percent after rinsing beans for 30 seconds. Goya black beans and La Preferida were the top picks for their texture and flavor. If you prefer low sodium, try Eden Organic No Salt Added black beans. They're packaged with bits of seaweed instead of salt. CR says Bush's black beans are another good choice, but Iberia black beans were a turnoff because of their tough skins and overly firm texture. Another reason to love beans? They're a protein and a vegetable that a lot of kids like. She actually has asked me to please cook more beans. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Oh, you just missed a little song from Steve. <laughs> yep, it's all about beans. Yep, yep. You probably know what it is. All right, live cam out there right now, 72 <laughs> degrees, and look at that sunset there in the distance. You can start to see a little bit of sun on the left-hand side of your screen, yet the cloud cover in place, the severe weather threat for this evening is diminishing for many here in our area. But don't put away the umbrellas just yet because we do have some scattered hit or miss type rain that is still possible into the upcoming weekend, not continuous all day though. And cooler tips around the corner as we head into early next week. Those details plus more KSAT Connect photos after this. You know, we depend on so many of you to, to help us whenever we have severe weather like we had earlier today. And you guys have really been coming through, sending us pictures through KSAT Connect. Keep it up. Uh, but all, of course, always be safe. When yes, you take pictures of severe weather. Always upload them after the storm has passed mm -hmm. you by. But it gives us such a great idea of what's actually happening on the ground. We call that ground truth because the radar does a pretty good job of telling us what is happening in the atmosphere. But when we do see these KSAT Connect photos come in, we're able to match what's happening here at the surface to the radar. So earlier this afternoon in the 1 to 2 p.m. hour, we did have a severe thunderstorm on the south 
southeastern side of Bear County. This is some of that hail that was actually able to fall from that cell. This is a KSAT Connect photo that was sent in from the 181 and South Foster Road area. Not exactly sure where this particular photo was taken, but some nickel size hail, potentially even a little bit larger in a few spots and lots of rain. Some of that rain was very heavy and did lower visibility on some of the area roadways. This taken from Lavernia as that same storm passed through far northern Wilson County. That's a nickel there, so that's at least quarter size hail, uh, which is what that storm was warned for. So again, thank you to everybody that did send in those KSAT Connect photos earlier this afternoon. As we were talking about earlier in the newscast, the severe weather threat here in San Antonio is coming down this evening because this cold front was able to push through the majority of South Central Texas. It did not stall right over the San Antonio area. So that's one of the reasons why Friday evening plans looking better. But that front still sparking plenty of widespread rain and storms in far eastern Texas. Hail reported in Houston earlier today as well. Some of that more widespread rain continues into parts of Alabama as well as central Georgia. Now for us here at home again in San Antonio, we've lowered rain chances over the next couple of hours, but across our far southwestern counties where that front hasn't fully been able to push through just yet. We are still monitoring some isolated strong storms, one just north of Kimato there in northern Maverick County and another one that's approaching southern Maverick County just to the south of Eagle Pass. This one potentially capable of a little bit of hail. So we're going to continue to keep eyes on that. But again, as we head into the overnight and even even more so into the weekend, we're still going to keep some scattered rain chances in the forecast. It's not going to be continuous each day tomorrow and into Sunday, but keep the umbrella handy. Here's the latest version of what the radar could look like through the overnight, anywhere between a 40 to 60% potential for some of that widely scattered spotty activity to develop that will continue to push in from the southwest and move farther off to the east. And again, don't get locked in on the exact placement of where this particular model is putting some of those showers and storms throughout the day on Saturday. Just know that it will be very scattered in nature and that will carry over into your Sunday. So until then, mid 60s, first thing tomorrow morning, approaching that 70 degree mark at noon. Highs in the low 70s into Sunday, more of the same temperature wise for the most part expected. Isolated rain chances continue into next week thanks to that low pressure system that's centered over the desert southwest. Still going to send some pieces of energy into the state of Texas to help keep those isolated rain chances in the works. Temperatures also take a hit as we see our next little push of cooler air arrive into early Monday. So cooler than average next week as well with high temperatures in the 60s. Okay, thank you, Mia. Ice bass, a big blueberry and a turkey trot coming up in the bus. All coming up. A routine traffic stop got a little wild in Bay Village, Ohio over the weekend after officers were followed by a pair of wild turkeys while pulling over a car. Just seeing what's going on, the local police department shared video of the encounter on Facebook. They can get aggressive. I know this. It's happened in the Northeast. Uh, the shows the officers trying to get away, the birds waddling right after them. No word on whether the driver that they had pulled over initially was ticketed, but it looks like the turkeys. Yeah. They got off with a warning. Yeah, it's a turkey roll there. <laughs> okay, the polar bear plunge, ice baths, Ooh. cold showers. Yeah, cold water therapy for health and fitness benefits has really exploded in popularity in recent years. You've seen it all over Instagram. But how safe and effective is it for most people? Well, a review of scientific studies of the method found that the quality of the research was inadequate to support most of the claims of efficacy. Yeah, the analysis published in the journal PLOS One examined eight randomized clinical trials. It found the study sample size too small, making it harder to generalize the results to other populations. Some research did hint at promising anti-inflammatory effects from the combo of cold water immersion and breathing, but researchers say higher quality study is needed to verify all this. Oh, maybe you want to try, you know, cryotherapy or something. Just uh, a few minutes and you don't get wet. Yikes. Uh, I don't know. All right, now we want to show you a gigantic blueberry. Look at that. It's about the size of a ping pong ball. The Guinness Book of World Records verified that that little monster broke the record for heaviest blueberry. Yeah, picked last November in Australia. The blueberry measures just a tad over an inch and a half. It weighs 20.4 grams. 
that demolishes the previous 2020 record of 16.20 grams. Now, the people that picked this blueberry say there are around 20 other berries in the same place that were about the same size. I wonder how they taste. I'm sure they tried them. They probably taste all right. Mm, all right. You think maybe they don't taste? No, I don't know. Blueberry enough? <laughs> we'll be right it's back. Like blueberry light. <laughs> All right, not here in San Antonio, but we're still monitoring these strong storms crossing over the Rio Grande, especially in Maverick County. The northernmost cell now has a severe thunderstorm warning attached to it, warned for the potential of quarter size hail and wind gusts upwards of 60 miles per hour. So again, the severe weather threat coming to an end here in San Antonio. We'll watch that and then rain chances this week. By the way, a friend texted me. I missed a golden opportunity. The giant blueberries taste very good.